Things obviously you can't do alone, and to establish and bind expanded networks, these business networks. So what is it? It's the European Commission's main funding programme for research in Europe, with a seven-year programme run from 2007 to 2013, with a budget of £50.5 billion. The UK at the moment, I saw some figures last week, um, I think are on about 12, 12.5% to 13% of the budget that we get back to the UK. We're second only to Germany uh, and ahead of France. And that actually works out that the UK brings back into the, into the UK economy through these grants a billion euros a year, about £800 million a year. So we are talking about a very, very important source of funding and source of R&D for the UK. Um, it supports research in selected priority areas the aim being to make or keep the EU as a world leader in those sectors. They're the four principal programmes. Collaborative research, ideas, frontier research, is also known as now the European Research Council, people, human potential, Marie Curie, there's some brochures uh, on the table near, near my stand, uh, and very similar to knowledge transfer partnerships, but very seen as a very high priority, and the UK does very well at it, and also the success rate is very, quite high as well. And capacities, and this is about developing research capacity. It could be research infrastructures, but there is a small programme in there, a budget in there, specific to SMEs. Now, SMEs are crucial, and the Commission require or indicate that they want something like 15% of the budget, the total budget, to come back to go to SMEs. So when I talk about a billion euros a year potentially coming back to the UK for these programmes, we're talking about maybe 100, 150 million euros of that coming back to SMEs. So it is something very much so for SMEs. And we obviously will do everything we can to assist in that. Cooperation is the programme that I'm primarily dealing with. As you see there, it's about over 30-something billion dealing with ICT health, energy, transport, where I work, uh, transport's 4.2 billion euros, space, food, ag and biotech, nano, environment, socio-economics and security. One of the complications, though, is that don't look and say, well, I'm in the health industry, so I'm in transport, transport. I'm in transport, this is the budget I go for, the 4.2 billion. No, because there are opportunities within the security theme. There's definitely uh, opportunities in ICT, because they have a a strand called ICT for mobility, ICT for transport. Nanotechnology materials and production also have streams for transport. Uh, Environment also looks after maritime. So when you look, when you as an organisation say, I I think there's an opportunity to do, to take this uh, project we have on into Europe, don't just look at, you know, the, the, the obvious. Talk to the national contact points. And they will advise, that's our role, is to advise you where best to go, where the work programmes are, when the calls for proposals are. Uh, Capacities, I've just mentioned that. There is a small programme there for SMEs, but it's really identify, it's it's aimed at SMEs who don't have the research capacity themselves to do research, and it's subcontracted to third parties, R&D performers, whereby the R&D performers do all the work, and the SMEs, in theory, get, get the IP. So, it's, it, as I said, it's aimed at company, SMEs that do not have a research capacity or a limited research capacity, but do want to exploit research. The funding. Funding has improved, particularly for SMEs. And in the main, public bodies get 75% of their eligible costs. Universities now get 75% of their actual costs. It used to be 100% in the old FP6 days, similar to the Research Council, but it was 100% of additional costs. Now it's 75% of actual costs. So your university professor now can actually get funded for being involved in these projects, whereas before it was primarily going on research associates. Research or non-profit research organisations also get 75%, and SMEs, 75% funding. So the only ones really now are on 50% are the larger industrial companies who are not SMEs. And there's some other sort of 
bits and pieces, about 50% for demonstration activities. There are also some, some very important projects called coordination and support actions, which are really about developing and building networks, coordinating research, identifying new research uh, potential, and there the Commission will fund 100% of those costs, but providing a 7% indirect. It's sort of like an overhead, but not actually an overhead. But they will be funding 100% of your actual personnel costs in doing the work. There's no profit element in there. Right, funding fundamentals. So, the Commission fund research in topics identified by the European Commission's work programme. It involves partners from multiple countries, so at least three... uh, at least three member states or two and one associated state. So when I talk about an associated state, I'm talking about Iceland, Israel, uh, Norway, Switzerland. But another thing which they're very keen on now in the Commission is, is, is introducing what they call international cooperation partnership countries. So in a way, so almost third world countries, including South America... Uh, Central America, Africa, the Medi- Southern, sort of North Africa, India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, China, in areas where it is of benefit to Europe, maybe through markets or maybe through using expertise developed in those sectors, or if it's for environmental reason, reasons, intending to inc- improve the environmental impact of work that's going on in those members, uh, those countries. I mean, an example was in the work program for surface transport, there was a topic called uh, dismantling of ships. Uh, and obviously at the moment, and, and I know there's some uh, issues going, well, there were some issues in the northeast um, with Abel about uh, some dirty ships, if you like, they disposed of those. But obviously for many years, disposal of ships has taken place by driving tankers up the beach in Bangladesh or India, and the enormous environmental impact as well as safety impact of that. And the Commission have been looking, have been funding or want to fund research into improving that for all concern, for all benefits. By means of a project, sorry, I carried on talking there. By means of a project of a specific type, there are, there are large scale collaborative projects, small and medium scale collaborative projects, and coordination support actions, and the Commission identify what they want funded what type of project they will fund and it's in response to a call for proposals so every every year probably the commission will publish a call in a sp- certain theme within a work program identifying specific topics that they will want you to uh, submit a proposal in so it's not a case of it's transport i want to put together a transport project or proposal the commission very much identify specific topics and those topics are not put or the work programs are not there by sort of accident the commission pull together their work programs with the support of the member states so if you want to influence what's in the work program then talk to the national contact points as well as the and and we also sit on many of the uh, program committees so that's where a lot of the influence takes place into looking at and clarifying the work program as well as some of their European technology platforms that exist. In, the U- in Europe, in transport, we have a car on aerospace, ERAC on, uh, on uh, rail, air track on road, and waterborne on maritime. So this is the route, this is the way that the, the work programmes are influenced. And, of course, we have, you have a grant agreement with the European Commission. Right, where do you get the information? Well, of course, we have our own website fp7 uk has its own i would say portal if you like and we have a central coordination point so anyone who's just interested in framework program can phone that number it's certainly at the end of this um, presentation and